Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new edition of In The Shop. And I'm out here in the shop today, I'm not at the workbench, but I'm in my boat. And you know, one of the great things about the off season, fall into winter, is you can reorganize your boat, prepare your equipment, and more importantly, store your tackle. And in today's In The Shop, I wanna walk you through my boat and how I store tackle, how I organize things, and actually how I lay it out in my boat. And once again, it's a great thing to do in the winter when it's cold out, is go through your boat, organize stuff, lay it out, and store it. Um, I wanna start up here on the front hatch uh, of the boat. And I don't care if you've got a 12-foot John boat or a 22-foot bass boat, um, really think about where in the boat you organize tackle. And my rule of thumb is I put the lighter stuff up in the front and I put the really heavy stuff in the back. Um, the reason I do that is getting on pad, top end, performance, all those things are increased when you keep the front light, the middle so-so, and the back heavy you're gonna get maximum performance out of the boat. So with that in mind, that's sort of how I store my tackle, where it goes. And this is my most forward hatch in the boat, my front hatch, my front compartment. And in that hatch, I'm gonna put all my lighter hard baits, right? I'm talking about crank baits, lipless, suspending jerk baits, top waters, all of my hard baits, they're generally lighter, and I'm gonna put them in this front hatch. I'm really uh, picky when it comes to how I organize my baits. And generally, I'm gonna organize by style, and then sub-organize by color. So I'll give you a little idea of what I'm talking about. Um, pulling out some crankbait boxes, so I've got them labeled DT4, DT6, I've got DT10, 14, all the way to 20, right? I have the gamut of crankbaits. And I've got them stored in a, fl a flambo box. Of course, the great thing about the flambo stuff, it's all got that Z rust in it, helps keep them hooks rust free. And then the other thing I do is I use uh, colored tape, really big colored duct tape. And then on that, I use a black Sharpie and I write the contents that's in the box. The reason I do this, it helps me in an instant look down there and say, what do I got here, right? DT4s, DT6s, lipless, suspending jerk baits, ripping wraps, whatever. I have, I have them labeled, I can see them. It's a really bright color. And then once I go inside, you know, I have these DT4s sub-organized by color. And, you know, again, this is a really important part of staying organized, uh, time management, having stuff at your fingertips. When you think about something, you know right where it's at, right? So all this is saving time. It's making you a more efficient angler on the water. So DT4s, uh, you, you can see I've got them organized by color, right? I've got blueback herring, disco shad, smash, Caribbean shad, I've got my crawfish colors, I've got my, my reds and my bright colors, I've got Rasta, old school, my chartreuse base colors. And my rule of thumb on a hard bait, um, crankbait, jig, spinnerbait, chatterbait, topwater jerkbait, you ready for this? Carry at least three of each bait, right? Three of each color of each bait. And the reason for that is simple. If you're, a, if you're an angler, hardcore fish head like me, or a tournament angler, you know that you'll lose one, you lose another. The worst thing in the world is to have one bait and you lose it and you can't replace it, right? So multiple baits, at least two or three of each color. And I carry that rule of thumb throughout all my baits. Hard baits, soft baits, spinner baits. And you're gonna see that in a second, but um, you know, all these baits are pretty light. You know, these are just 
hard body lures. They really don't have any weight to them. So all these get stored in the very front. All right, moving on. Before I get to my storage locker, I do have a little, great thing about a bass cat is I have a little side, another front side compartment here. And I use this to store stuff that I get at a lot during the course of the day. I'm big on dyes and paints and scent, right? So all my spike it stuff, I've got that in a Ziploc right here. And for my tournament fishing, I've also got my balance beam, my TH cull pins, um, my scale, my plug knocker. That stuff's real easy and I keep it right there. It's right near my feet when I need it, when I'm fishing. All right, so we've got a rod locker on the right that's loaded, I mean loaded, with my Abu Garcia Ike rods. And, um, you know, my rule of thumb is carry more than what you need. So if you think you need five, carry eight or 10. If you think you need 10, carry 10 or 15 or, 15 or 20. Always carry a few extra rods, and I've got them all stored in my rod locker. But on the other locker, on the other side, I utilize this as lure storage as well. And on this side, I've got my spinner baits, I've got my buzz baits, I've got swim baits, and I want to just grab a few and sort of show you how I store them. And these are um, moderately weighted. Spinner baits are moderately weighted. So I keep those toward the back of this locker. And the swim baits, which are lighter, I keep up toward the front. Remember that weight distribution, okay? So in the back of this locker, almost right in front of the console, spinner baits, buzz baits, and I'm a big fan now of uh, this amazing new box Flambo created. Um, it's called a blade crate. And the great thing is it, it's a, basically a filing system for your spinner baits, buzz baits, lipless vibration. And literally, you can just file away your favorite baits. And I do the same thing in these boxes. I organize by size. So I have a blade crate for my half ounce spinner baits. I have one for three eighths. I have one for big three quarter ounce. And then within each of these files, there's like three sections, I have them organized by color. And the same thing, you know, I like to have multiple of each bait. So white and chartreuse, I've got two, half ounce, double willow, uh, or three. You always want multiple of each one. Um, and this is a great way to store your spinner baits, puts them right at your fingertips. And again, it's watertight. It's got Z-Rust in it, it's perfect. Then as we go forward in this hatch, this is really now where I start to carry my swim baits. Um, I do them in both traditional boxes and also in Ziplocs. So I love the Ziploc storage. The great thing about the Ziploc storage is I can carry a lot of packs of swim baits. Once again, instead of one pack, this is a great one, 3.8 Pro Blue. I'm gonna have two or three packs in there of each color. And I also, also have some hard boxes too. And you know, I label these um, just like I did my crankbaits, 4.3s, 4.8 Power Swimmers. I've got that labeled. Um, again, they're lighter, right? So that stays up toward the front. All right, now we're gonna get to the middle compartment, and this middle compartment, it's sort of back here in the middle of the boat. And for this one, I'm gonna store all of my soft plastics. And I use a lot of soft plastics. I use a lot. And this time of the year, when I'm organizing and storing, once again, I like to store them by category, by color, by size, and I use a lot. I use a lot of Ziplocs. And so here you're gonna see flatworms. I've got flatworms and green pumpkin. Here are 
Berkeley Powerbait Generals uh, in dark colors. So I really spend time in the off season making sure these bags are full. And you know, for this one, I've got three or four bags of each color. Same thing here, three or four bags of each color. So I'm a big believer in really staying organized. And you know, that doesn't weigh too much, you know? So I can carry a bunch of plastics in here and have some spares. I wanna show you the other box I use, which is a real good one. And this is uh, a Flambeau box. That's another good one. Uh, and it's a long box that is multi-purpose. A lot of guys use it for spinner baits, but I'll even use this one for some items that I know I need a little extra of. So again, there's some more soft stick baits, the big six inch, 5.2s. And this is another great uh, way to store that soft plastic. But again, everything's organized. Color, size, in Ziplocs. I'll use a Sharpie and I'll actually even mark the Ziploc. Um, a lot of these Ziplocs are nice because it has a little white area. So I'll get a Sharpie. It's a regular black Sharpie. And, and this one, you see we've got the four inch water bugs. So just right, right there, four inch water bug. You could even put the color GP for green pumpkin. And I'm creating efficiency. When I'm on the water and I look in that hatch, I can look at that bag, know exactly what it is. Again, look at that. I've got two or three bags of each color in there. It's relatively light. Store that in there and I'm ready to go. I want to show you one last tip before we go to the back, which is I'm a big believer in creating a box for each event, okay? I'm a big believer in creating a box for each event. So we went through a lot of stuff there. I've got hard baits, spinner baits, lipless vibrations, swim baits, soft plastics. I've got them organized by size, by color. I've got those labeled. But when I know I'm going somewhere, I create a little box just for that place, right? Here we are in the winter. My next event, water's gonna be cold. So I've created a little box anticipating some of these cold water baits that are gonna work. Look at that. There's an Ot de Faux crankbait. There's a DT6. There's a Shad Wrap. And this puts things that I already know or have a feeling are gonna work right at my fingertips. And I usually, this box is smaller. It's a, it's a smaller size box. And a lot of times, just to keep it very handy, I'll just throw it right in that soft plastics box and just keep it right on the top. So I'm, I'm big in efficiency, time management. If I know I'm going to Lake X in a week, I create a little box just for Lake X. All right, we're almost done. I'm gonna take it to the back, and this is where I store all my heavy stuff, like terminal tackle and jigs. All right, wanna continue on, and now I'm in the back of the boat. And remember what I said, you know, weight distribution in your boat is super important. So now I've got two hatches back here behind the seats, and I'm gonna load that stuff with the heavy, heavy equipment. So behind the driver's seat, I'll put my terminal tackle, worm weights, drop shot weights, jig heads. Think about how heavy that stuff is. Think about how heavy lead or tungsten can be. So I've got terminal tackle, and then on this side, I'm gonna put my other heavy stuff, like jigs, my flipping jigs, my football head jigs, my blade baits. The other tackle that's super heavy, I want it all in the back, okay? So we'll start on this back with terminal tackle. And, you know, this is a supply center for me for the critical pieces of rigging, right? Once again, worm weights, nail weights, Carolina rig weights, tube heads, drop shot weights. And the thing about these boxes, they're significantly heavier than all your other categories, right? 
One of the best boxes I've found for really heavy, heavy stuff, this is the Quotient series. This is the IQ Quotient series boxes. And I wanna, just wanna open this up and show you what I mean. So inside these boxes are actual little trays and they're removable, sort of these removable cups. You notice this one has my VMC Nico weights, my VMC nail weights in it. And the great thing about that, look at it, it's rigid, right? So unlike a box that just has dividers, that heavy weight won't push. It won't push over to the other side. And the great thing, look at this, they're so interchangeable. Drop that in there, go to my next one, and I can change these out at home in the shop. Look at that, I've got my Carolina rig weights. These are all tungsten. And again, it's a rigid box. They fit beautifully in there. And when I'm talking about storing terminal tackle, it's no different than my crankbaits, my worms, my spinnerbaits, it's no different. I want everything organized by size. I want everything organized by style, right? Look, I've got Nico nail weights, regular VMC nail weights. I've got uh, tungsten slider weights. I've got tungsten uh, Carolina rig weights. Everything's organized. Everything's labeled, okay? Other thing I love about that box, solid shutting box. Everything's labeled. Nail weights and C rig weights, it's right there. I've got it on the top and on the side. So it makes me really, really efficient. But all that heavy stuff, put it in the back. Carolina rig weights, worm weights, drop shot weights, tube heads, jig heads, all that heavy stuff, get it in the back. And then finally, on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing, right? I've got box, my boxes of jigs back here. Here's a box of blade baits. Um, and same thing we talked about. Everything's labeled, organized by color and style. So in this jig box, I've got my micro jigs. There's another one with mini flips, flip outs, headbanger footballs. Here's my Mullix blade baits, labeled on the top, on the side. And these jig boxes, these blade bait spoon boxes, they get heavy. So I want them in the back. I want to get that weight to the back. Um, listen to me, find your own style, but use some of those tips uh, on storage. Uh, organized by color and style. Use the labeling systems that we talked about so you can identify it quick. Use Ziplocs. Think about how you lay it out in your boat to get not just great access, but maximum performance out of your boat. And most of all, use this off season, use the winter, use these cold couple weeks as a time to reorganize your tackle. It's gonna make you a better angler, I promise. I hope you enjoyed this week's In the Shop, out here in the boat, talking about tackle organization, tackle storage. Uh, wanna wish you a lot of luck coming up in the new year. If you like all this stuff you're hearing, if you like these little tips that we're giving you, do me a favor, pause for a second, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna get you new content every week. If you're already a subscriber, do me a favor, tell your fishing homies about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. They're gonna love the content as well. We'll see you later. More organization in 2021. Bye.